Hey, this is Soldier7 here reporting for Right Wing Federation, and as you see, I got another chance to do a video like this, and I wanted to talk about something important, something a little about history, and that is, as of now, it is the 30th anniversary of the 1989 revolutions. Now, around this time, about 30 years ago, even a little more earlier, countries, especially in the Eastern Bloc, or Eastern Europe behind the Iron Curtain um, there were people who took to the streets against ta taking a stand against the communist regimes that they lived under and hopefully gain a chance at freedom which is something that needs to be remembered because I'm not sure if people are going to remember this in the future or so forth. There are people who probably have forgotten all about it. I can't say how many, but let's hope that we will remember this because this incident here just shows why why communism in general is not a good thing i mean sure it may sound good on paper it may sound good in theory but this the, the this incident the the revolutions of 1989 i mean there were even times before that where it showed that yeah communism while it may sound good but in reality, every time it's put into practice or used, it always ends up in disaster. Whether if it's famines, human rights abuses, economic failures, or whatever. It just makes countries even worse. And around this time 30 years ago people in Eastern Europe mainly I mean there was also places like Mongolia and even Tiananmen Square which is now the 30th anniversary of that there was you know with the tank incident and everything so uh, yeah, I wanted to just talk a little bit about that today, and hopefully people will remember this, because I think that this was probably, if one of, if not the, if not, if not the, but at least one of the most important revolutions of the 20th century, because it showed that communism is really not all what it's what it makes itself out to be it talks about you know classless and inequality and everything but at the end of the day it just leads to disasters as I've just given a few examples already but we saw around this time people taken to the streets from you know East Germany, Poland, Hungary, Romania, and the Baltic countries and so forth. And they took a stand and said no more. We want to get rid of communism. We don't want to live under communism no more. We now want to live in a free nation. We want to embrace more freedom within our nations. And in the end, that's what they all got. As you see, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the collapse of the Soviet Union two years later, and even the revolution prior before that in Mongolia, 1990, and 
it goes to show how many people are willing to take a stand against communism. Not that people didn't before, but a lot of the times in the Eastern Bloc, those who took a stand against communism were not successful as we looked at, you know, the if you if you're familiar with the incident like the Forrest Brothers or the Baltic resistance who fought against Soviet occupation in the post-World War II era, the early Cold War era. But this is when it was finally achieved that what those people were fighting in the early phase of the Cold War within the communist bloc, they finally achieved it. Not amongst every communist country, because of course, well, yes, the Warsaw Pact nations and the Soviet Union and so forth, they may they might have all collapsed, but we still have communist countries today like North Korea and Cuba. Who knows when communism will ever collapse within those nations or China, for example? Even though yes, there was Tiananmen Square, the there was the Tiananmen Square protests and everything, and there was the tank incident. But even then, communism still rules certain countries. And question is, is will they ever get a chance to? Will they ever get a chance to embrace freedom? Not the freedom that they have been privileged to have. Like in China, yeah, things are different in China than they probably were at that time or even 10 years prior to this, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a free nation, is it? Just because they allow certain freedoms, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, it's a free country. But, but still, nevertheless, it did show that there were people who were willing to take a stand against communism in hopes for a better and freer nation. Whatever they thought their vision was. And this is a part of history that I think is important to remember um, because it, like I said, I'm not sure how many people know about this, how many people even remember this or what will, how it will be known as in the future, who knows. And I hope that remaining communist countries like North Korea and Cuba or China or even countries like Nicaragua, Venezuela, Angola, Zimbabwe, where they have like Marxian socialist authoritarian dictators practically. Hopefully they'll get a chance to endorse more freedom in their nations, embrace it, like these people did in 1989. And these revolutions lasted for, for years, well not like so many years, but they lasted up to two, maybe even three years. Especially Christmas Day, 1991. My first Christmas, exactly. The Soviet Union collapse. And yeah, things weren't perfect when they collapsed, but I think we can say that even if countries today, like Russia or other Eastern European nations, even if they're not perfect today, it could be clear, it could be, I think it's, well, I think it's pretty clear you can say that they are much better off today than they were under communism. Yes, we are entitled to our opinions, there are those who will not agree, and okay. But I do think that this is an important part of history to remember, especially those in America and other free nations who look at these countries during that time and think that, you know, these communist nations were great. But that, that's another thing I want to point out. These revolutions of 1989 showed that that wasn't true. Even when they started allowing certain freedoms, 
within these within these countries when they were still under communism it go to show that people decided no this is not enough we want more freedom we've had to put up with authoritarianism through communist party rule for so for so long enough is enough we want a chance to embrace more freedom through a free nation and as time went by we saw that so um, I think this is an important topic to talk about and think about because who knows what will become of it in the future how it will be seen as so I uh, just wanted to talk about that a little bit and yeah and hopefully people who think communism is a good thing and think you know oh communism's great we need communism and even politicians within here in the United States who want to embrace certain ideas like that my solution I mean suggestion would be look at the 1989 revolutions and I've made videos in the past about about this I did an I did a video about this in 2016 and then I did a hashtag remember 1989 and that's another thing I would like to say today is remember 1989 to those who are both communists or anti-communists I would say remember 1989 and I guess that's all I have to say today. This is Soldier 7. Thanks for listening.